So last video, we talked about lightweight subdivision, which is the first half of my current workflow. And I'll put a link to that video here somewhere uh, in case you missed it. The second part is using the Mop Booleans toolkit, uh, which just came out for Moto. And uh, it's a kit from William Vaughn uh, with uh, design help from Torfric. And uh, what they've done is they've put together this really slick system for working with uh, the mesh op stack and live booleans inside of Modo. Now you may think Modo already has that with Mesh Fusion, but this is actually much more useful to you uh, as a hard surface artist. Now the reasons why that is will become more obvious uh, as we start looking at it, but lightweight subdivision uh, plus these booleans, uh, this represents my current workflow. So uh, we'll take a look at how it all works and hopefully you'll like it. So for clarity, um, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step how to use the Mop Booleans kit, but it's going to be more about what it does and how you can integrate it uh, into the lightweight sub-D workflow that I started showing in the last video. Uh, I use a lot of hotkeys for this. Uh, typically, uh, when you first install the kit, you'll be using the uh, the pie menu that it comes with, you know, to uh, create new mop items and subtract things, intersect things. But once you get uh, used to that workflow, you'll find it kind of slow and you will set up hotkeys, uh, which is super simple to do. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it. So having said that, to get started with a mop, uh, with a mop item, let's say I was modeling something, uh, whatever this might be, you select your base mesh item, select one polygon on it, point at it, and fire off the create hotkey. Uh, that creates a uh, mop item in the item stack. And if you open that up, you can see this has your 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 mesh operations all all laid out inside of it, all pre-assembled, all created. Now this is where you would end up spending a lot of your time uh, if you were doing it manually or if you were a more advanced user you could create like a setup you could load from disk and stuff but i find it so much more convenient just to fire up a hotkey and be done with it and I'm, I'm sure you will too eventually now let's say that i have this mop thing set up and all it does is this this is just a cube being being added so let's say i want to take these meshes here and subtract them from that cube so i just select uh, you know, at least one polygon per object, uh, so it knows which pieces I'm talking about. I point at the object and I fire off my subtract key. Now you can see these visually changed, but obviously they're not intersecting this thing yet, so they aren't cutting. But if I hop into here and I turn off the selection highlight and drag it through, you can see now we're cutting into that mesh and we're cutting in uh, obviously dynamically. And now that we're cutting into the mesh, we can do whatever we want with these pieces. Drag them around, you can resize them, you know, it's all happening in real time. Now this is very much like Mesh Fusion, but it's also not like Mesh Fusion. Because you can see in the corner here, we have 1600 triangles right now. And in Mesh Fusion, this would be much more expensive. And honestly, uh, once you've created your mesh, you can just start to play with it. You can add bevels, add add things to the meshes, change the meshes, whatever you want to do. You can uh, do a bevel halfway through that cut, and that kind of thing. Get some neat stuff going. And with the rounded edge shader turned on, when I render this out, when Moto catches up with what I'm doing, you'll see that it. There you go. Has all the nice edging and everything on it, and, it, and it's perfectly good for uh, normal map baking. Now, what may not be so obvious here is that uh, I've mixed uh, regular modeling and sub-D modeling uh, to create this shape. The cube in the background with the bubbles is not subdivided. It's just a basic low poly mesh that I created in Modo. Uh, the cylinders are subdivided uh, using the lightweight sub D. They uh, isolate those and turn them off. They have eight sides you know, a piece and they're subdividing twice and that kind of thing. But 
Uh, the system can freely mix your low poly meshes, your sub D meshes. Um, you can use edge loops if you want to. You can use use edge and face weighting. You can intermix freely, uh, which is another huge advantage not uh, over mesh fusion. Honestly, uh, at this time, about the only advantage that mesh fusion has over this system is that mesh fusion can handle a more complicated tree more easily. And mesh fusion, you know, can give you that strip control where you can control the bevels and the transitions between two objects. But that's honestly, you'll come to realize that mesh fusion and this tool are serving different purposes. This tool is for knocking out nice hard surface shapes quickly. Mesh fusion's real purpose in life is to take complex meshes and merge them together. Uh, nicely. So uh, once you make that distinction in your mind, the two tools uh, work together for different reasons. And it's great on both ends of that, actually. So yeah, we'll just continue to noodle with this because I find it fun just to fool around and see what, you know, uh, what I'm able to create. So if I hit those edges with Boolean or uh, with bevels, I should say. You can see they get smushy, but all I have to do is fire off my hardened edge hotkey, like, you know, like we saw in the last video. And I'll flatten out the, the ends just by grabbing the ends and telling them to be flat and tight. And then the Boolean now looks a lot more interesting. Now here's what I wanted to show you. I see in the middle here we have this uh, splooge going on. That's because you can't have parts of your cutter that touch other parts of the cutter. And it's the same with intersections and unions and everything else. Uh, that's a limitation of moto booleans. It's just how it works. So you can see if I grab this and move it away, you know, the splooge vanishes. Put it back, the splooge returns. I, mean, I guess it isn't really splooge. That isn't fair to say, but it's uh, each mesh operation, each chunk is subtracting and not respecting what the other one has done, I think is really what it comes down to. Because remember, this cutter is one mesh item. So the way you counteract that uh, here in the mop toolkit is you can take a mesh and you can put it into your, uh, your alternate subtract item. So I have a hotkey for that as well. So let me, just, let me check what it is. I have it on my whiteboard over here. Okay. Uh, until I get that muscle memory down, I need to keep referring over there. So I'll put this into my alt subtract. Oh, wait, oh, I got a point at the mesh. Okay. Now you'll see that this mesh item is in the alt subtract section. And now I can, I can interact with the, uh, the initial subtracts just fine with no hassles. And I probably shouldn't even bring this up, but it, as you get more advanced with this toolkit, you can create uh, your own custom uh, assembly for the mop thing that has as many uh, alternate subtracts as you want. You can make alternate uh, intersections and so on and so forth, but uh, I haven't had to do that yet, and you probably won't either for quite a while. Or ever, possibly. Um, I actually don't see a reason why I would ever do that, but it's nice to have that capability. You know, it's nice to have that feature expansion uh, already accounted for. But anyway, let's let's move on. Okay, uh, so one last thing that might be interesting to see is the uh, the intersection, right? So let me just make a quick shape here. We'll make a box, kind of a wide box. We'll give it this. We'll scale it up so it's kind of like a you know, like a curve sort of a shape. We'll slap on some edge weights so it holds that curve nicely. And we'll position it on top of this mesh. Scale it out enough that it scale it out enough that it covers everything. Yeah. And then if I point at the mesh and I hit my my intersection key, as you can see now that now that cube, now the only parts of the mesh that are coming through are the parts that intersect my rounded cube. And this is really getting into some powerful territory. And you can make some wild shapes with this. And it's super simple, fluid, and very solid. 
I don't think I've had a single crash using this toolkit. So yeah, yeah, I can't really recommend it highly enough. So there's a quick look at the mop booleans kit for Moto. Um, and as I said at the beginning, this, this combined with the lightweight subdivision stuff, uh, this is my current workflow. And to demonstrate that uh, next video, you know, I think we'll actually build something. We'll take some small uh, mechanical piece and, and we'll just knock it out from start to finish and just uh, show you how you put something together uh, using this workflow. So um, you know, I'm going to have the link down in the um, uh, description. You can click it, uh, go buy it, uh, watch videos. There's streams from Tor Frick using it, you know, in case you want to see something a little more advanced than what I was doing here. And uh, I'll see you next time.